and welcome back to my channel my name is EK and today I want to talk about some of my kind of spring it was supposed to be May but it's now the of June so just spring favorites things that I've been enjoying things that I um, recommend and some things that I'm kind of using at the moment first of all I want to talk about two um, charities and causes that I've um, donated to recently and that you may be interested in donating to as well. So the first one is the Young Historians Project which is a charity that aims to um, improve and increase uh, the participation of um, black young people in the UK um, in terms of studying history and getting involved in history and other kind of history related um, professions or spheres. The second charity is a charity called um, Black Minds Matter and it is also based in the UK and it aims to get um, black people connected with therapy therapists if they um, need or would benefit from therapy and also covers the cost of those therapy sessions. Getting therapy in the UK is very difficult, um, obviously the NHS and the associated like medical spheres and like psych psychological and psychiatric services um, are obviously not like immune from these kind of institutional uh, racist ideas within the UK and so a charity like this is going to hopefully help people who are coming up against um, the difficulties within that sphere of medicine. So I will leave the links down below and if you have a bit of spare cash, maybe consider chucking some money their way. What we have to remember is that the um, movement that is gathering pace at the moment isn't a short term thing. For example, the Montgomery bus boycott, which um, involved Razor Parks, um, went on for like a year um, and they did win. Uh, they did win after that year and the buses were desegregated, but it's not like, things aren't fixed yet so it's going to keep going and obviously while there were a lot of um, influencers on you know YouTube and Instagram who were talking about it for a couple of days maybe or a couple of weeks it's then like declined in terms of the amount of attention it's getting so I will hopefully be able to highlight um, other charities and other causes um, as we go kind of through the year. It's a marathon not sprint so um, as a white person I need to lend my support long term as well as in that um, short term kind of couple of weeks. So in terms of the products that I've been enjoying using this spring I've got a few makeup products um, and then some books, some music, uh, video games, TV and then also um, one notable flop from spring that I haven't enjoyed at all but we'll get to that in the end. So first of all we've got the Naked Honey palette I have really been enjoying, it is here, I've used this a few times in videos, I did like a first impressions and then I've been using it, well not solidly, I've like barely been doing my makeup, I only, I did my makeup and tried to film the other day, went completely wrong, I was like, I was like no scrap it, and then I've done my makeup today off camera and I'm very very pleased with how it's looked. I didn't just use the Honey palette, I did, I used the colours Sweet, which is there, and then Drip, which is that one, and then Golden, which is that one. I also used um, a shade from the uh, Lena Beauty Strawberry Dreams palette, and then also from the Fenty Galaxy palette, you know, the really shimmery one. So I was kind of using a bit of everything, but I have used this um, multiple times since I got it. Winding you there, sorry. Um, and I really like it. I am very pleased I got it. It isn't going to give you the variety that some other palettes will like. I mean you can do brown looks, you can do warm toned looks, you can do like golden looks but it's all kind of within that spectrum. But I like that because I like all of those looks. I like doing them in the summer so more like this um, and then pairing it with like a kind of lighter blush um, how I've done but then also in the autumn I'm kind of pairing it with a different coloured lip maybe like a dark brown um, or like a berry colour. So yes I am pleased with this. I'm glad I bought it but if you are thinking, oh, should I buy it? Have a like a solid think about how much you are actually going to use these colours. You know, is it going to be something that you've reached for again and again? Or is it going to be like, okay, I've done a few golden like smoky looks. That's it. I'm fed up with it. Because if so, don't bother. All right. And the next um, product that I've been enjoying is the e.l.f. Primer. No, Paulus Putty Primer. It's just the like original one. I know they do like a matte and hydrating one. Um, I really like this. I'm wearing it today. It is not the most long lasting um, primer. Like it's not going to make your foundation last like six weeks or whatever. But it is nice. It gives a really nice finish on the skin. The foundations, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, um, can sometimes be a little bit um, patchy on my dry patches. Um, but this kind of gave a really nice, um, not like mask effect, but like a really good um, primer uh, I guess that's what it's called primer but uh you know like when you're painting a wall and you put primer underneath I don't know I've never used primer on a wall I painted a Chester drawers once well it was a bedside table anyway um 
also because it isn't too expensive this was like eight pounds I think um I don't feel bad about like using quite a lot so I managed to like kind of get it all down my neck and stuff which I think also helped with um the dry patches which also helped the foundation um go really nicely over the dry patches so yeah I am pleased with this I've got about three well I've got more than three primers but I've got two primers this one and the Fenty um moisturizing primer i don't know one of the fenty primers but that's a mini so between the two i'm pretty happy with um like my primer situation at the moment in terms of foundation so a while ago i did a kind of first impressions slash you know review wear test thing on the ordinary serum foundation um i have used it a couple of times since and it doesn't last like all day it my oil still come through it still breaks up a bit but I do like the finish of it and I don't think it's so oily that it's unbearable. But today I paired it with my Fenty Beauty foundation, which is the um, the matte one, like the original one that they came out with. And they're very similar consistency, they're really liquidy. So I had, I had already kind of thought, oh, I wonder if they'll work together. And I was right, I was right. See, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind, what's that? I don't know, but, and I'm so creative like that. <laughs> Just, wow, they look amazing together. I think I look amazing today, I really do. I haven't worn makeup in uh, some weeks, months. I've only been out of the house once in this entire quarantine, and to be honest, I regret it. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. I think it's given me like a nice even skin tone it doesn't look too cakey um between this like concoction and the um elf primer i think it's just done a really good job and i feel like really beautiful so yes i'm very pleased with that one that is the makeup portion the next bit segment whatever is some books that i've been reading so the first book there's two books that i have read recently the first book is by helen castor it's called blood and roses and it is about the Passman family who were a like generic uh, like gentry family in the 14th and 15th centuries um they were just like there wasn't anything particularly special about them but they wrote to each other a lot and huge like reams of their correspondence survived from like the 15th century up until uh, like the modern day so we get like a good insight into the 15th century for a non-noble just kind of like you know they were they had money they were kind of making their way in the world they were on the up and up um but yeah they are a really interesting family the Passman family and this is kind of a biography of the entire family that being said the first like third maybe of the book is kind of like pretty cool to go through so you get like the first i think three generations of um patriarchs so like clement william john or william clement john i don't know in some order and john is like the third one um and he's like doing a lot better for himself and he's trying to kind of secure this inheritance that he's been left by um like a friend of the family so for a lot of it it's just kind of boring legal disputes but then john dies you know r.i.p and his son also called john takes over along with his brother also called John um and then it gets a little bit more exciting and like it's a lot more fast paced and the kind of John Jr or John the second is um a lot more like interesting to read about so I was kind of glad when the, the first John died so no offense you know I mean it was a while ago I'm sure he'll be over it but yeah it was good it was just a little bit dry to get through at times because of the aforementioned John the next one is was a lot easier to read um and that is Ian Mortimer's The Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval England so this is looking at the exact same period as the Blood and Roses one but instead of looking at a particular family it's the idea is it's um a you know a travel guide it's as if you've gone to medieval um 14th century england on holiday and he's kind of advising you like what you know where you're going to visit what you want to wear what what you're going to eat all things like that um and it is really interesting the way he talks about women is kind of weird like you can definitely tell it's a man writing it and he kind of takes you on this really quick like three page whistle stop tour through like being a woman whereas i think a better way of doing it would be kind of looking at the role of women in each of the topics rather than having like women as their own topic like more of a thematic like analysis I guess I don't know I just it, you could definitely tell that a man was writing it it is good I did enjoy it um it is a little bit drier than some of the other similar books I've read um it was easier to read than the Blood and Roses one but if you are interested in this find this one a bit like dry to read the other one I would recommend is Ruth Goodman's How to Be a Tudor which is brilliant and it's 
like it is similarly in depth although obviously it's a couple of centuries later than this one but um Ruth Goodman does I think it's called like living archaeology or something where basically she does lots of experiments and like tries out these um like Tudor methods so you know baking um she's made like you know a traditional Tudor brick oven and stuff like that she's made all the outfits and like lived in their clothes for a few weeks to kind of see how it would feel and I find that really interesting I really like the way she talks about it and because the Tudor era is so popular you know looking at like Henry VIII um, and Elizabeth I and um, all the various like noblemen and noble women um, it's a good way to get a glimpse at like from the bottom up rather than just looking at the nobles and you can then imagine you know when you're reading about the nobles so at the moment I'm reading Wolf Hall which is here by Hilary Mantel it is a lot bigger than these as you can see but having read Ruth Goodman's book you can then kind of understand a little bit more um, when you're reading either fiction or non-fiction about the same era you can understand how they think about religion and how they think about the calendar or how they think about medicine and things like that and it just gives you that um like broad basis of knowledge so I really I like the Ian Mortimer one but I think I like the Ruth Goodman one better anyway let me just have a little sip sip music is my next little segment it's only one thing and that is Dua Lipa's new album uh what the fuck is it called Future Nostalgia it's really good and I've been trying to listen to some other music as well I've been listening to um Lady Gaga's new album which yeah I'm not sure about and um Megan Thee Stallion um her mixtape and then obviously the uh like remix of Savage with Beyonce and I've been enjoying that but like in terms of a whole album I keep just going back to Dua Lipa with Future Nostalgia so if you haven't had it I recommend go and listen it's nice kind of like disco pop um I'm not good at describing music okay I just like whatever I like next video games I haven't last couple of days I haven't really been playing video games but um through May I replayed all of the um Assassin's Creed games um with Ezio um I got like a remastered um also I'd remastered like Ezio collection it's called and so it's um Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed Revelations like all in one um little bundle for about I think it was 15 quid and it was like 15 quid well spent so I played through all of them really enjoyed it I've played them before um on PS3 I think um and really enjoyed them I love the Assassin's Creed games I'm very excited about the Viking one um in terms of things I've been watching I have been watching lots of reality TV at the moment so one TV show that I've almost finished both seasons on um watching with my mum on Netflix is Zumbo's Just Desserts and it is a dessert like culinary um competition you know like master chef but it's just desserts and the guy who's like in charge um his name's adriano zumbo and he is like a pastry dessert chef in australia i had never heard of him but i had heard of like the other judge um rachel Koo, who i remember watching her tv show little paris kitchen and i really liked it so i've always been kind of fond of her um and so when i saw that she was in it i was like yeah i'm gonna end up watching it and we kind of blitzed through the season one and we're almost at the end of season two and i mean it's very over the top it's very dramatic um but it's just good fun another reality like competition thing we have been watching is um sewing bee the great british sewing bee on bbc one uh next week is the final um but the like whole series up until now i presume is on iplayer we have watched it for a few se few seasons now um but last year and this year or was it just this year i think it's last year and this this year um joe lycett has been the presenter and i find him hilarious so yes i've been very much enjoying that um i was kind of one of those shows that i was like counting down the days for it to return but yeah i'm really enjoying it highly recommend it and finally the other tv show that i have been watching is well i've finished now is what we do in the shadows the second season which is all on iplayer as well and as is the first season the tv show is a spin-off of the film um which was like produced and directed and written and starring I never know but it's um one of the Taika Waititi like comedy um films that he's done it's also got Jermaine Clement but it's about vampires and when I heard they were doing a tv show I was very excited when I heard it was set in America hmm, I was a little bit suspicious um the three main characters are from the UK so I was like hmm, no okay I'm, I'm game for it maybe I'll have a go and I've absolutely loved it it is amazing it is definitely as good perhaps 
it's not better than the film it's as good but because there's so much more like it's it's extended the joy is extended but yeah it's amazing i highly recommend it um to anyone and everyone so i think that makes up like things i've been enjoying or interested in or like recommend through the last few weeks slash months there is one like fail um of the last few months like a spring fail and um that is john knox the um scottish uh reformation figure um i just don't think we should be involved with him at all and that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like and subscribe if that's something you want to do. If not, just go around, have a blessed day, and I will see you in my next video.